I hope you locked up the bike properly. Yeah, okay, Dave, that piece of junk. Who's gonna steal your bike? Hey, it's not a piece of junk. That served me well. It's my lucky bike. Listen, what about the spezzatino? I'm confused right now. What? How do you do it? Come on, you've made spezzatino so many times. Yeah, I know, but... That's good. You're doing sofrito. Right. Finally then... chop up the onions. Okay. Then, then the what? carrots. Finally, finally chop up the carrots. Then the celery, same good. thing. Good, then good. Great job. No, Maria, come on. Everyone's supposed to make their own dish for the sagra. Can't believe it. This recipe is Maria's spezzatino. <laughs> Spezzatino is basically a stew, and in Italian, spezzatino means little pieces. I'm using beef. Of course, you can use beef, pork, veal, you know, whatever works. One thing, you don't have to go crazy about getting the top cut of meat. There's nothing confusing about Maria's spezzatino. First thing, extra virgin olive oil. Once your oil's heated up, get the beef and throw it in, sear it, and cook it up for a few minutes until it gets nice and brown. A little salt, fresh black pepper, Sear the meat for a while, and once it becomes a little brown, remove it from the hot pan, put it back on a plate. Adding all your vegetables for the sofrito. So amazing. And this helps give lots of flavor to your sofrito. Add a little bit of red wine. And get those little bits of fat and flavor, the meat that's stuck to the bottom of the pan. And now for my potatoes, right into the pot. And I like cutting my potatoes in fairly big pieces. This way, once the spezzatino has been cooking for an hour and a half, potatoes remain somewhat intact, not look like one big papa. Now a little bit of salt and pepper. And now just throw in your seared beef. Cook it in. Now, like a stracotto, you add wine. You need to add a lot of liquid. Let it cover the meat. I like just adding un tocco, a touch of pureed tomato. Spezzatino is a nice, hearty dish that's perfect for the fall. Bring your pot to a boil, reduce it to medium heat, put the lid on and let it cook for about an hour and a half. Spezzatino. Ella Maria. Maria, please don't get up. Buongiorno, David. Oh, Marco. Tutto bene? Tutto a posto. Bene, bene. Ciao, Maria, buongiorno. Allora? Polenta. La polenta. 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 Marco, you're supposed to make a dish, not bring the ingredients. No, I don't have a kitchen in my studio. Okay, use my kitchen. No, I have to go. Come on. I have to go. Wait, where are you going? Manicure, manicure. Fine, you know what? I'll get Maria to give me a hand. I want to come with you. Dave, I'm going to go for a manicure. I can't believe it. We'll see you tonight. You guys both agreed to make dishes. Well, so we'll see you tonight. We'll go to meal di sale. Tell me, Ciao. 
a half hour to make. Polenta. Mm, mamma mia. Yeah, I, I killed a little blade. For our sagger this afternoon, I've asked everyone to bring a signature dish. I guess Marco's idea of his signature dish is to have someone else make polenta for him. Polenta is cornmeal cooked in water, and when prepared properly, it becomes nice and creamy, dense, kind of like porridge. First thing, you need lukewarm water, adding cold water will make the polenta very lumpy, that's not a good thing. Now for this recipe, 500 grams of polenta, 2 liters of water. A lot of people love polenta, but so many hate to prepare it. It's a lot of work. Pour in your cornmeal in one even stream. Your pot should be on medium heat. And once it comes to a boil, lower it down so your polenta just bubbles. There are two different types of polenta. There's a white and yellow cornmeal, and both have two different types of texture. There's a coarse one, which is kind of like sand, and a very fine one like flour. I prefer the coarser one, because I find when cooked, it adds a lot more texture and flavor. It's a lot of work, this stirring. No wonder Marco got me to cook this. When your cornmeal has absorbed all the water, just lower your heat and keep stirring until there's a nice light bubble and your polenta goes bloop, bloop. Keeps you company. It's a lot of work. Strangely enough, polenta in certain parts of Italy is used more than pasta. In fact, in Veneto and Friuli, it's served as a side or an antipasto, but mostly as un primo, a main dish. Some traditionalists say that you have to stir in the same direction. I don't know if that's true, but if I'm going to work this hard for this long, I'm going to follow some wise advice. My polenta is finely ready. One of my favorite ways of having polenta, a little bit in a plate, some fresh olive oil, and freshly grated parmigiano. Of course, you can put tomato sauce on top, really anything you want. Now for this recipe, I'm just going to flatten out the polenta, just right on the workboard. I'm let it cool for about a half hour, and then cut it up into little slices, just like bread. 